The GI tract requires an extensive vascular supply, so the next three tutorials will go over the arterial supply to the different regions of the GI tract, celiac trunk, superior mesenteric, and inferior mesenteric artery. The first is celiac trunk. It supplies the four gut organs, which include the following, the distal esophagus, which we don't see in this picture, and then the stomach, and uh, in addition to the proximal part of the duodenum, and then halfway through it transitions to the midgut, and that's supplied by the superior mesenteric artery. It also supplies the liver and gallbladder, not shown in this illustration, but the pancreas it shows, as well as the spleen. So let's talk about the celiac trunk. It arises from the abdominal aorta. It's the first unpaired organ um, that arises right uh, uh, where the um, two crua of the diaphragm are located. And it has the following three branches, left gastric artery, splenic artery, and common hepatic artery. Let's go through each one of these. The first is the left gastric artery. It courses along the lesser curvature of the stomach on the left side. It's the smallest of the three branches from the celiac trunk. It also forms an anastomosis with the right gastric artery we'll talk about later. And this left and right gastric artery course within the lesser omentum on the lesser curvature of the stomach. The splenic artery gets its name for where it goes, the spleen. As a matter of fact, most arteries get their name for where they go. And the splenic artery courses along in this um, kind of like curly pathway and goes into the hilum of the spleen. And along the way, it sends off these branches called pancreatic arteries or pancreatic branches that help supply the body and the tail of the pancreas. It also gives rise to this other structure, uh, artery called the left gastroomental artery, sometimes called left gastric epiploic artery. And it courses along the greater curvature of the stomach and goes within the uh, greater omentum. And then these short gastrics that supply a part of the fundus of the stomach. We then have, on the opposite side, the third branch called the common hepatic artery. Whenever you see the prefix common, you know it'll bifurcate. One of its bifurcations is called the hepatic artery proper that then gives rise to the left and right hepatic arteries that go accordingly to the left and right lobes of the liver. It also gives rise to a cystic artery that goes to the gallbladder. Um, off the hepatic artery proper is the right gastric artery, and it courses on the lesser curvature within the lesser omentum, and it forms an anastomotic connection with the left gastric artery. The other branch from the common hepatic is called the gastroduodenal artery, gastro for stomach, duodenal for duodenum. So the gastric portion is this right gastroomental artery that courses on the greater curvature of the stomach within the greater omentum, and it forms an anastomotic connection with the left gastroomental artery that comes off the splenic. We have this superior pancreatico-duodenal artery. It seems like sometimes the smallest arteries get the biggest names of this. And yeah, so there's a big one. It's on the superior aspect, supplies the head of the pancreas and part of the duodenum, hence the name superior pancreatico-duodenal artery. It's also important because it forms an anastomosis with our superior mesenteric artery. So let's talk about this term anastomosis. It means where two blood vessels come together. The superior mesenteric artery is shown highlighted in this picture. There's the celiac trunk going to the gastroduodenal artery and the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. And there we have the two. And so even though the illustration doesn't show it, those two branches from the superior mesenteric and uh, gastroduodenal artery come together. Now this is important so that if you ever get a blockage, you can get collateral blood supply between the foregut and midgut arteries.